How do we prevent bone diseases like arthritis and osteoporosis? What can we do to avoid those two things? Osteoporosis is not a calcium deficiency. Osteoporosis is disuse atrophy of the bones. Uh, we have become sedentary. Uh, um, we used to spend our lives out uh, hauling firewood and working in the garden using heavy tools. And, uh, and, um, and every step you take carrying a basket of, of anything that has weight sends a little gravitational wave down your bones that wakes them up and makes the osteoblast in your bones spin out new bones. People who are physically active doing weight-bearing exercise um, should not get osteoporosis, especially if they're not doing things that damage their bones, like drinking coffee, too much salt, too much sugar, soft drinks. Uh, these things uh, increase the, the dissolution of the bones. Um, so uh, the, the whole, uh, and again, go to my website, drclapper.com. I've got a webinar called Healthy Bones, and it goes through uh, all of this uh, uh, in detail. Uh, arthritis, that uh, means inflamed joints. First of all, most people with sore joints do not have arthritis. Uh, what they have is inflammation of their ligaments and their tendons from how they're using that joint. Uh, and uh, these are, often these are low-grade athletic injuries. If, if just one hand is getting sore, oh, doc, I got arthritis. What are you doing with that all, that day? Oh, I'm flipping hamburgers all day. Well, th this is not arthritis. This is an inflammation of the, of the tendons, ligaments, and supporting tissues. Um, <clears throat> The other, there's also a whole breed of uh, arthritis uh, of the inflammatory kind. These joints are sore, but it's coming from the gut. Um, they've uh, injured their gut lining through too much sugar and alcohol and, uh, and chlorinated drinking water, all those things that kill off their gut uh, bacteria. Uh, their guts have become uh, more, more permeable and food proteins and cell walls of bacteria are leaking into their bloodstream and flowing through their joints uh, and setting off inflammatory arthritis. These folks need to, again, adopt a whole food plant-based diet, maybe get on some probiotics and a few supplements that will help uh, uh, heal their gut and heal their joints. Again, go to my website. I did a webinar on leaky gut, and you can find out that protocol there. Um, it's the food, it's the food, it's the food. Um, very rarely, uh, if someone comes in uh, with a destroyed hip joint from carrying too much weight for too many years and they just ground down that joint, uh, you asked what good things uh, Western medicine came up with. Uh, hip replace, uh, joint replacements are one of the best, along with cataract operations. They are both miraculous procedures if you need them. Uh, but by and large, start with a whole food plant-based diet, get yourself lean and trim, and take a walk every day, and most of those joint problems go away. So would you each like to make a closing comment to sum up your thoughts for this evening? We'll let you start. <laughs> yeah, I haven't said anything lately. Um, but I, I sit in here to listen to these great doctors, and I've heard the, the phrase whole food plant-based diet about 900 times tonight. But uh, the odds remain in this country that... Uh, there's about a one in less than one in 10 chance you're gonna hear that from the average family physician. And so my question, I guess, to them and the whole medical community is how long is it gonna be before we teach this in medical school? Any medical school. It seems like we're nowhere. You, you guys learned from somewhere other than medical school. And a lot of people are suffering and dying when it's obvious to you and everybody else in the room that the whole food plant-based diet can cure most of what's wrong with us and wipe out 80 percent of our cost of health care and save two trillion dollars to our economy what's wrong what's it going to take it's hard to change institutions it's very hard to change institutions and there are a lot of good people inside of the institutions that we need to capitalize on i think and I agree with you, we need to teach this in medical school. But I still say that the way that we're gonna change this is grassroots. This medical system will shift. Uh, let, me, let me give a comparison that I think will illustrate the point and make you feel really hopeful about this. Because I don't think I'm stupidly optimistic. I think I'm optimistic for a reason. You know, 20 years ago when I started, 24 years ago when I started eating differently, 
I remember going to restaurants and I would say I'm a vegetarian. They go, oh, you're a veterinarian? <laughs> and I would say, no, I'm a ve I'm vegetarian. Nobody even knew what I was talking about. And, and the grocery stores, there was a, there's a Kroger store about a mile from my house and it, has, it had this little section, I'm not kidding, it was about this wide, okay? And they called it health food. All right, and then you'd look around the rest of the store and say, what is this, right? What's the rest? And, um, and with it, we had one, we had a couple of health food stores and they were such strange and unusual places that we used to do field trips to the health food store because you had to wear your beads and sing Aquarius when you went there. And so we were afraid that if we sent people unaccompanied, they would never go back, which was pretty much the truth, all right? So now I wanna tell you about what, what it's like in Columbus, Ohio today. Um, the Kroger store that I mentioned, still a mile from my house, has been removed, remade into a Kroger marketplace. Everything any of us in this room want to eat is there. I, it's a mile from my house. Now, I love going to Whole Foods. We have two ginormous Whole Foods. We have three Trader Joe's. I think they're building a third Whole Foods, but, but the bottom line is without ever making a trip to a specialty store, Kroger has it all. Kroger has it all. Um, there are, the health food store that was like the size of my bedroom is now occupying what used to be a full grocery store. It's huge. You can't operate a restaurant in Columbus, Ohio that if you don't offer something for people like me to eat, and they all do. They all do. I can't remember the last time I was in a restaurant. Maybe they had to fix something special for me, but I haven't left hungry in 15 years from someplace. So why did this happen? Here's what I'm getting at. Why did this happen? Do you think that all of the grocers and, and the people who serve food got together in Franklin County where Columbus is said, you know what? We are such benevolent folks, we business people. For the good of the people who live in this county, we're going to change our operations and offer healthy food. And we are so sure that it'll work that we're willing to make the investment and hope that the customers show up to buy it. Is that how this happened? No. What happened is people started asking for it. And when people start asking for it, the marketplace responds. All right? So we've got to stop waiting. Nobody waited for grocery stores to come around. We started walking into grocery stores and telling them what we wanted to buy. We started walking into restaurants and telling them what we wanted to eat. And the restaurants and the, all the food purveyors in the country are pretty much you know, hip to the situation now. So what we have to do is we have to start demanding the medicine we want to receive. We've got to make sure that everybody in Houston knows about Dr. Montgomery, and he's so busy, he can't go home at night. Because if we patronize the great doctors, we'll starve out the bad ones. That's how the marketplace works. And that gives every single person in this room and every single person watching this video the power of your checkbook. You have the power. Use it. Every time you buy something, and I tell our members this all the time, every time you buy something, you're saying, this is okay with me. That's why you don't buy um, conventionally raised animal foods anymore. You're saying it's okay to put 10,000 animals in a building and produce all that excrement that you heard about earlier tonight and beat cows with crowbars. You're saying, that's okay with me. I just wrote a check for it. All right, so think about the power of your checkbook. You don't patronize medical institutions that are not friendly to this type of cause that we're talking about. You don't go to doctors who are arrogant and don't listen to you. You go to the good doctors. You see Dr. Clapper, you see Dr. Montgomery. And over time, and it won't take long, over time you'll see the same kind of shift in medical care that we've seen in the food offerings and restaurants and stores. This is a fixable problem, but it's up to us to fix it. We have to be the busy ones right in the consumer movement. That's how it'll get done. Yeah. I agree with that 100%. And often when I'm talking to my clients and on boot camp class and my patients, I clearly tell them, don't expect the world to change for you. Expect yourself to change the world. And really, you all are part of a movement. And once you make the decision to consume only the food that's best for you, you've already started that movement within your own circle. Because people are watching what you do. They're watching your every move. You have, may have friends, neighbors, families, et cetera. And they're seeing what you do. And I'll tell my patients that, you know, I have a patient whose family doesn't want to change, their spouse doesn't want to change, you know, they go to family reunions. So don't worry about that. Let's start with you. And you start making changes, you start reversing your illnesses, you start reducing your medication list, and you just say nothing else. Let your actions speak for you. And you start to see family members change. But there's a grassroots 
uh, change that's happening. I'm seeing it even in Houston. Uh, you go to places like New York and they're just exploding with plant-based restaurants. I mean, it's just enormous, every other corner uh, on the East Coast. Uh, but it's happening all over. And, and I'm seeing a change. I don't know if we're quite at the tipping point yet or how close we are, but I'm starting to see the change in this uh, environment. And I've been in this area for about 12, 13 years, you know, noticing eating plant-based myself and, and, and being aware of this. And in that short period of time, I'm seeing a very significant change uh, in the places I work and the places I speak. And so uh, I'm very optimistic about the future. I'm optimistic about uh, our outcome as a country in terms of health, but we can't be complacent. We have to continue to push, we have to continue to, to deliver the message, we have to continue to educate each other and, and keep this movement going. Absolutely. Um, and I'll contribute by uh, hopefully ending us on a more optimistic note, uh, continuing with what uh, Dr. Popper and Dr. Montgomery just said. Uh, next week, I'm going down to Anaheim, and I will be speaking at the fourth international conference on plant-based nutrition in healthcare. And this is the fourth year that physicians from around the world are coming to talk about how they are using plant-based nutrition in their practice. They come from literally around the world, from uh, India and Israel and Australia and the UK and Canada and South America. They're coming from everywhere, and every year we have hundreds more coming. Um, this is a very, very positive sign. Um, the following month, uh, I'm going to the University of Rochester Medical School. I'm sponsored by uh, PCRM, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, and they are uh, sponsoring me on a speaking tour to go around to the medical schools and give the third and fourth year medical students the lecture that I wish somebody had given me when I was a fourth year medical student, and to tell them that, listen, you're not going to be seeing bubonic plague and Tsutsukamuchi fever. Uh, you are going to be treating patients with degenerative diseases from what they are are eating. And until you recognize this, you're just going to be treating symptoms. They're going to get sicker. You're going to get frustrated and leave medicine. Plant-based nutrition is the key if you're serious about getting your patients healthier. And, uh, and it's time for you to, uh, to understand this and become skilled uh, in this kind of counseling. No matter what specialty you go into, um, it's the food, it's the food, it's the food. Um, don't relegate to your patients. Uh, send them to the dietitian. They'll give them a diet. Uh, you find out what your patients are eating and help them move into the plant-based world. So the light is going on in, in the minds and hearts of physicians around the world, and the hundredth monkey phenomenon is, is, is slowly, we're probably in the medical profession, we're at monkey number 24, uh, but it, it was only, it was monkey number 10, uh, you know, five years ago. It's slowly happening. And what Dr. Popper said is absolutely right. One of the major impetus for doctors to uh, um, open to the plant-based uh, idea is what they're patients are telling them about the books they read, about the, the uh, improvements that their husband just made when he went on a plant-based diet, doctor, is this working for me? And slowly, uh, you know, our patients are our best teachers, uh, and we all know that uh, on, on this side of the stethoscope. And, uh, and our patients are telling us that plant-based nutrition is, uh, uh, is the definitive therapy for the majority of diseases. So assuming the world holds, holds together for another 10 or 20 years, I I think we will see the very things that uh, Mr. Hicks is, is uh, exhorting us to, uh, to bring into being here. Um, you're going to see the plant-based uh, ethic, ethos, uh, sweep through the medical profession because it's the only thing that really works. And, uh, and when we stop getting defensive and we're afraid to, and stop being afraid to let go of old concepts that didn't serve us any longer and, and uh, fully open to this ancient yet very modern therapy of, uh, of whole food plant-based nutrition, uh, you'll see the medical uh, uh, profession uh, really uh, assumes the honest mantle of giving true health care. And uh, this, is, this is happening and you all are part of this. We're all of us are practicing uh, this very, very powerful 
form of medicine uh, we're being practicing it tonight. It's going to go around the world uh, on the internet connection. Uh, and Dr. Steve uh, over on the right here is, uh, is uh, he's a healer. All, everybody here, the technical folks in the back there, are helping this healing happen on a global level. Everybody who participated here and goes home and talks about it is part of this healing. So uh, there is indeed good reason to be optimistic. Uh, we'll look back and look at the bad old days uh, before, uh, before plant-based nutrition got accepted and we'll say, phew, uh, finally the new day is dawn and, and the physicians are, uh, are, are allies instead of uh, adversaries. So uh, I'm optimistic and I'm very grateful uh, to be allowed to uh, participate in this remarkable and very healing endeavor. There's a, a healthier future for us all if we just keep working at it. So uh, be optimistic, a uh, brighter day awaits.